hello to one Sergio Pettis. There he is. The king is here. Hello, Sergio. How are you? How are you feeling? Oh, man, I feel way better. My legs are beat up yesterday, but uh, today I'm back to normal. to walk around and uh, take everything in. It was a crazy, crazy Friday. Yes, it was a crazy Friday. By the way, am I am I right in assuming that you now consider yourself the, the rightful holder of that belt? You've done enough, right? For sure, man. After getting beat up for uh, 18 minutes and to come back and finish Horiguchi like that, it was a... Uh, I feel like I deserve that title now. You know, I deserve that, that, that 135 champ for Bellator. Could you tell us what, and, and you, you might not remember, but if you do remember, like what is going through your mind going into the fourth, even going into the third? Not a lot was going your way, and Horiguchi is one of the best fighters in the world. Are you starting to lose hope? Are, are you starting to feel like, oh, crap, I'm about to lose this? But like, what is actually going through a fighter's mind in those moments? Yeah, man. Um, third round, you know, I was like trying to put it together and nothing was going my way, man. He was he was faster than me. He was uh, smarter than me. And I was prepping for a stand-up fight and he, he surprised me a lot with those takedowns and uh, just his injuries to the takedown. You know, he was very smart. That jab pushed my head back and every time the takedown was there. So yeah, I was definitely flustered and... Uh, frustrated man you know his movement was hard his um everything was different he had a different rhythm so going into that fourth round you know i, I knew i was losing the fight duke duke told me like i ain't gonna lie to you man you're down three rounds we're gonna need something we're gonna need to finish for this fight so i just went out there and like man i, I gotta finish this dude i gotta i gotta pressure him you know i gotta stop being afraid of getting hit by him because i've watched his highlight videos so i was like you know i was a little nervous on the entries you know he's been dropping a lot of people and i, I didn't want to make his highlight real but um Man, yeah, the fourth round, I just went out there and I just, I pushed it and I, I went outside of my box, you know, I'm more of a safe fighter and um, I just, I went out there and did, did different than what I'm used to. Did you, I mean, quite literally tell yourself, like, I need to let this go. I, I just need to stop worrying about him hitting me, about getting knocked out, being on a highlight reel, F it, it's now or never. Hundred percent. It was. It was like it's now or never. And yeah, man, I was. It was hard. You know, I was telling Duke in the uh, the fourth or going into the fourth round. Like, man, I'm frustrated. Like, this guy's. He's ahead of me in every every way possible. He was. Uh, he was dominating me, man. Honestly, like he was. He was doing a great job at uh, shutting me down and not letting me get anything off. So, yeah, I, I knew I needed something big, and I, I do that move a lot, man. I, I do a, a head kick, and I always exit with a spin back because you know just uh, just in case the head kick misses and. It's, man, it worked. It Who taught worked. you it's that? Crazy. Who taught you that? Honestly, I just feel like it's something I do at the gym. You know, uh, you know, I, I throw my right leg a lot, and people pull away from it, and I just follow through with a spin back fist, and it's been landing a lot at the gym. So, to see it happen in a, a title fight, especially a, a comeback fight like that, it was a blessing, man. Oh my god! I mean, it's one of the great finishes. I don't know if you saw a clip. Um, this guy on Twitter, his name is Caposa. He's a legend. He posted the clip of Yoel Romero against Fejal maybe, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago, the fight ended the exact same way. Have you seen that clip? It's pretty crazy. Yeah, at the I time, I was that. like, shit, yeah, I, I don't clip. know if you've ever seen that before. You, you saw it now or you saw it back in the day? I saw it back in the days. Wow. I, I watched a lot of your world's fights. So yeah, I saw that one. Crazy. So in that case, you're actually, you're, you're, you're going for the head kick, but in your mind, you're like, if this misses, I'm going to be ready. Like it's, it's almost like a two-part sequence in your mind. Yeah, hundred um, percent. It was just a, a little backup move, just in case the head kick does miss, which it did. He did a good job at reacting to that that head kick. I was surprised, like watching the video. He was so aware of everything, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like he started to slow down a bit, you know, in the fourth round. I could hear him breathing a little bit heavier. His movement wasn't as fluent as before, and um, you know, he just it was something out of the box, man. Something he wasn't ready for. What if anything surprised you about going up? Like what what made him so tricky in those first three rounds? Um, just his movement, man. He moves so different. You know, it was, uh, that in and out game, you know, he, he didn't give me much chance to react to things. Like he, he was just in control of the whole, the whole scenario, hitting me, di dipping out, making me, uh, kind of like just, you know, making me react to stuff that wasn't even there. You know, I, I was just, I was swinging that air. I was, I was frustrated. I, I was, yeah, man, he, he was ahead of me a lot. Like it, it was crazy. It showed me a lot that I need to work on. Uh, so you do pull off the spinning back fist, you connect, you knock him out. And to me, I know most fans probably don't care about this sort of thing, but as impressive as the finish is the fact that you didn't throw that extra punch on the ground. And I don't think a lot of people would blame you because of momentum, because of everything going on. How do you stop yourself literally like with an inch of throwing that punch? You probably were frustrated. We see you take off the mouthpiece. You throw it. You probably wanted to throw that punch. How do you stop yourself oh, in that moment sure. from doing it? 
honestly, like when I hit him with it, I thought it was fake. Like it felt like a dream. Like he, he fell out and I ran up and I, I, I had that thought in my head, like hit this motherfucker. He just beat your ass for, for three <laughs> rounds straight. And once I saw, you know, the damage that, that the spinning back fist done, um, I, I, I just like that switch turned off right away. You know, like I don't, I'm not there to destroy people's lives. You know, I, I'm a martial artist at the end of the day and I got the job done. I don't need to add that extra, that extra shot for no reason. Could you even describe what's going on in your mind? Like when you realize that the fight is over, like when you're throwing that mouthpiece and you're on top of the cage and you're yelling, like, what is that feeling like? And have you ever experienced that in any of your fights? Never experienced any of that in any of my fights. It was like a blackout moment where I was just so overwhelmed with joy. And uh, yeah, man, it was, it was a weight lifted off my shoulders, you know, that, that like, like 18 minutes of getting my ass beat and to get that, that outcome, man, it was just like, wow, I, I did it. Like, I, I felt like it was my time, man. Like it was supposed to happen for a reason. You know, I was looking at the camera, like it's my time. Mm-hmm. If, it feels like, it feels like it was my time, man. I still feel like it's my time. You know, that, that fight taught me so much from everything I need to work on. You know, I, I, it was cool to have that outcome and amazing, like the best moment of my career, but it, it just showed me and it showed everybody else guidelines on how to beat me. So it's like, I got to adjust and make sure I'm ready for that. It is an amazing thing, right? Because it's almost like, uh, I mean, in no other sport can you have something like this where you're essentially getting outplayed for the majority of the fight, but you win at the buzzer. Usually if you're getting outplayed, you're going to lose by 20 points at the end. But this sport is so crazy that in a in an instant, you can turn things around. So the mix of emotions when you know all the adrenaline subsides, I would imagine was crazy because you did get, you know, you, you were beat up for 15, 17 minutes, yeah. but then you freaking pulled off one of the greatest finishes of the year. So how do you balance those Man. two emotions? Man, I don't even know. I just <laughs> kind of just went through it. You know, I was just, it was crazy, man. You know, that's why MMA is crazy. You know, I, I've been on the opposite end before where I've, I was beating people like really bad and I've, I've ended up getting finished. Like I was serious and I was beating them up for two and a half rounds. The last 30 seconds, he gets me with a rear naked. Or even Ryan Benoit, um, the whole first round at 125, I was destroying him. And then he catches me with a left hook. So yeah, man, it's just, uh, it feels good to be not on that, that end anymore and uh, to you know be on the, the giving end, not the receiving end. Was it at all strange? They didn't show him a lot, but it was very clear that he was not in a good spot. And I think uh, some tweets started to come out that a stretcher had to be brought in. You're obviously happy, but I'm assuming that you can see that he's, you know, he's really hurt. Is it hard at that point, once you calm down a little bit to fully celebrate when you see your opponent, you know, being stretchered out? Yeah, man. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it's a, it's a job and it's martial arts and that's uh, obviously it's not something I want to do, but it, like I said, it's either him or me. And, um, yeah, it was hard, man. You know, I, I'm not here to end people like that. And it, it is what it is though. At the end of the day, you know, I had to do what I had to do, but yeah, man, it was definitely tough. And I even, I got down on one knee and said a little prayer, you know, our father and look over Horiguchi cause you know, that's a, that's crazy. It's a crazy finish, man. He was, he was out for a while. I'm assuming you didn't see him afterwards, right? He went straight to the hospital. Yeah, he went straight to the hospital. I reached out on Instagram. I don't know if he saw it, but you know, I'm just wishing him a speedy recovery and uh, hope all is good. That is very classy of you. I, I spoke to his coach, Mike Brown. He said he's uh, back home in Florida and that he's doing okay. So awesome. That awesome. is uh, awesome. That is great to hear. Um, it feels to me like the win over Archuleta was big. If we ever look back on your career in 15 years, this is the moment where you're no longer Anthony's younger brother. This is the moment that I think will be the kind of crossroads of your career where you are officially out of his shadows. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm coming into this fight. I told Duke too. I'm like, I feel like this fight's going to be my, my breakthrough for it. You know, my, my big, my big break, you know, like all the hard work, everything I put into these last 10 years, it's going to, it's going to come out, uh, this Friday. And, um, you know, after, after three rounds of getting beat up, I'm like, maybe that, maybe that thought wasn't real, but, uh, yeah, once I landed that, I was like, wow, man, this, this is definitely the fight that breaks me out of my brother's shadow and people can actually see who I am and what I'm capable of doing. When did you know about the Grand Prix that they were going to announce it on Friday? Did they tell you beforehand? Yeah, they, they did tell me a, a couple of days beforehand, but, uh, I was supposed to say anything. So I just laid low and, you know, you held out yeah, on I'm us. You held out on us. How do you feel about it? I feel um, excited, man. You know, uh, for my career, I've never had a Grand Prix uh, option or to be able to fight for a million dollars at the end of it all would be amazing. But also just to know that if I win these fights, I have three to four set fights within a short amount of time, which is awesome because, you know, 
Um, I'm only getting older, so I want to make sure I'm active before I get to that point of, you know, taking breaks and um, taking long breathers. So, yeah, I'm blessed, man. I'm, it's a great opportunity. Um, some tough opponents, you know, I got a couple of teammates in there that I got to watch out for as well. So it's an it's a interesting, interesting move for my career. If they asked you, who do you want to fight in the first round? Who are you picking? Whoever they, you know, whoever they Come put up on. against. Yeah. I know, I'm preference. sorry, I'm sorry. You're the top seed. I know. Top seed, man, whoever they give me, you know, I, I, I got to go against all of them regardless. You know, I, I've learned in MMA that a lot of people I came across the journey that I ended up fighting them or um, seeing them, you know, fighting for big level fights and have a possibility of fighting them as well. So whoever they put in front of me, man, I'll never say no to a fight. So, you know, whoever they want me to fight, I, I'm, I'm going to go out there and do my job, try to defend what I, what I earned. How awkward would it be in the in the gym if you have to fight Ray Fron Stotts? Well, he moved to Houston now. He's oh, back. Okay. He's back at home in Houston. So I, I don't think it'd be too awkward. Um, definitely awkward, you know, to fight a, a teammate and a, a brother. You know, he's someone I've trained with for six years. I've gotten to know the guy really well, and he's a great dude all around, man. He's he's very supportive towards me, and he's taught me some things, and I've taught him some things. So definitely a a, a different part of me that I'm gonna have to explore. Uh, did he move to Houston because of this? Um, well, he moved to Houston because he had a second kid and he wanted okay. to be closer to family and stuff. So, But uh, I guess it was kind of perfect timing for right. everything that's going on. So I don't know. I don't know exactly. <laughs> what a character, though. I don't know if you said you were getting ready, but he did uh, He did the interview on the desk before your fight. He's talking about the taco meat and all this stuff. <laughs> that guy is a freaking character. Holy smokes. Yeah, man. He's got some uh, charisma. He's a, he's a cool dude. Um. I think the perfect scenario is putting you and Horiguchi on the opposite sides of the bracket, and then maybe you guys fight in the finals. What do you think of that? I think so. I think so too, man. Honestly, he deserves a rematch. You know, it was a a crazy move to get hit with, but after dominating me for four rounds, like we, he definitely deserves a rematch. Yeah. Um. And when when do you think you'll start the tournament? When would you like to return? Honestly, whenever they tell me, um, I, I have plans of going back to the gym this week to hit some bags and yeah. just to uh, keep my keep sharpening up my tools. I already hit, hit some weights this morning. So I'm all in, man. You know, my body's, my body's good. Uh, just the shins a little sore. Other than that, uh, I'm ready to go back. So no serious injuries after all of that. No serious injuries, man. I, I'm not too beat up either. Um, yeah. No cuts. Um, just, just the, the leg kick. He was kicking me hard, man. My, my legs definitely feeling it, but, uh, compared to yesterday to today, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Have you noticed a massive change in your popularity? More people hitting, you know, like I, I noticed the clip less than 12 hours later had over a million views on Twitter, crazy views on Instagram. Have you noticed a change since pulling this off? Um, not, not really. Um, definitely noticed a change from like uh, bigger fighters hitting me up and, you know, congratulating me and stuff. So that's awesome to see uh, Nate Diaz reached out, Tony Ferguson reached out, you know, people that I, I look Sick. up to and, yeah, so it's uh, it's awesome, you know, man. Uh, I've been here for a while, and um, to get this love and to finally get something that I've been praying for for years, it's a uh, it's a blessing. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, really happy for you. By the way, last question: uh, Your brother Anthony posted a screen grab of like a betting thing, but there were some people who say he didn't actually pull the trigger on the bet. Did he pull the? Did he make the money, or was he just saying if I would have put this much, I would have won this much? <laughs> Honestly, I haven't hit him up about that okay. yet. I don't know. I, I got to hit him up. Yeah. So hopefully he made that money. Hopefully it was a good night for both of us. Oh my gosh, Jesus. Uh, an incredible night if he actually pulled the trigger on that. Regardless, <laughs> so happy for you, man. Well done. Uh, congratulations. You are the rightful owner of that belt. Uh, happy holidays. Get well soon. And I can't wait to see what you do next in that tournament. It's uh, It's really been great to watch you evolve into the fighter and the human being that you are today. Hey, thank you, Harry. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for having me on, and happy holidays to you as well. Thank you so much. There he is.